Hey, what's up everyone? So I've been driving for the last 17 years and I wanted to share a couple tips with you guys on how to save money on car insurance. If you guys are new to my channel, I started this channel with the goal to save you guys money so that you have more money to invest and build wealth. Now, if you're fortunate enough to live in a city where you don't need a car to get around, then this video is probably not for you. You can close this video now. Now, I know a lot of you guys probably don't even know what you guys pay on your premium. You probably got a quote once upon a time and it just stayed with you, you know, ever since. So you'll want to kind of know this number so you have a baseline to compare against um, because some of the tips I'm going to give you are probably going to drastically reduce that premium amount. Now the average US driver pays about $1,600 annually for their car insurance and that's just for one vehicle, which is absurd. Um, me personally, I pay about, you know, less than $1,400 a year for all three of my vehicles. And it actually was lower than that. You know, I got a at-fault accident in 2016 and it went up a little bit. You know, it was about, I think it was about $1,600, $1,700 a year for all three. And now it's kind of dropped back down to about uh, $1,400 a year. So let me uh, share with you what I did and how I got the premiums to go down a lot. So let's talk about some of the obvious things that you obviously need to do, which is, you know, don't speed and get tickets. Don't get into accidents that are your fault. And obviously don't get any DUIs on your record because those things will destroy your insurance premiums like it did mine. Um, you know, granted my, my at-fault accident was very minimal. Um, it still raised my premium quite a bit and I wasn't very happy about it, but you know, it is what it is. It was my fault, so. Um, another obvious thing you can do is bundle your insurance with, let's say, your renter's insurance or your homeowner's insurance or your motorcycle insurance. Um, that will kind of give you a small discount. It's usually like $100 or, or something like that, which is not very much. All right, let me show you my plan really quick here. You can see I have three vehicles on the policy and you can see the breakout for each. Um, but you can see the total six month premium is about $656. So it's a little bit less than what I told you earlier. So it's about $1,313 or so here uh, for the full year. And it's probably gonna go down in the next six months because this is a six month premium. It actually went down this renewal. It just renewed in January here. You can see it's uh, not a bare bone policy. It's uh, 100, 300,000. So, you know, in the event you seriously injure someone, uh, you got up to $300,000 to cover all the people in that accident, which, you know, hopefully it's enough and hopefully you didn't hurt them too bad. I mean, you shouldn't be driving that crazy anyway. So um, this should be plenty to kind of protect you and your assets. Property damage, I have 100,000, so if I hit that Jaguar or something, hopefully it's 100,000 in damages or less, so that way it's covered. And then medical expenses, um, I have uninsured motorists, so this one has to do with the one-way insurance that I have on my 4Runner here. Um, I don't get full coverage on that because it doesn't make sense to, it's, you know, it's a really old car and I kind of go off-roading with it, so, you know, it's going to get beat up anyways. But that uninsured motorist is in the event that someone hits you and doesn't have insurance. I do live in California. There are a lot of people that drive without driver's license here. And also they drive without insurance, which is even worse. And so that'll cover me there. You can see, um, you know, on the full coverage, it will cover 100 300, which is normal. And then on the, on the car number three, which is my 4Runner, it covers up to 3,500, which my car is, only, that, that truck's only worth about probably that much anyway. So, you know, it should be okay. Um, and you can see here I have a collision and comprehensive at $500 deductible. So it's not like I have a $2,500 or $1,000 deductible. These are reasonable deductibles for having, you know, full coverage insurance. It's not required that I have it, but, you know, I have it anyways. And I've been thinking about removing it from my policy because, you know, my cars are getting pretty old and I don't really care that much about them anymore. And I can easily replace them if they ever get damaged. You know, this collision and comprehensive really just covers you when it's your fault and you want your car covered um, you know let's say you hit somebody so the you know the, the property damage is going to cover that for their car um, the collision is going to cover your car so that you don't have to pay you just pay the deductible ultimately it's going to increase your premium anyway so you're just going to lose all your money that way <laughs> regardless so think about getting rid of it and just going straight you know single liability or you know one-way insurance so that it just covers the other party and you know if it's my fault it's my fault take responsibility you can see I did not elect for towing and labor and also rental, which is interesting. I don't know why I didn't get towing, but usually a tow, it only costs about $100 um, to do it whenever you call someone out to come get you. Um, so it's not really, you know, I might add it back in actually. It's weird that I didn't have that. But for rental, um, the rental I don't need because I have three vehicles. So there's only me and my wife that drive. And you know, if one of these cars is down for repairs, um, you know, let's say it's in the body shop, I have another car I can drive already. So I don't need a rental um, policy. 
So the premiums are pretty cheap and I'll kind of share with you how I got to this point. Alright guys, so let's get to the tips. So the first tip I have, and it's probably the most important one, is to make sure that you guys shop around. And I know a lot of you guys are kind of, you know, quote unquote lazy like me before. Um, and you guys didn't shop around, you just got, you know, whatever quote someone gave you or, you know, perhaps you were on your parents' plan and, you know, let's say they're longtime AAA customers or longtime State Farm customers. Uh, you just went with whatever they had and that was kind of, you know, the way things were. And so you've never actually really gone out and looked at what other companies have out there. And so, you know, what I suggest you do is go get quotes. I mean, it's really simple. It doesn't take very much time. And I'll even give you a couple of suggestions. Like here in California, the cheapest insurance company that I've found has always been Geico. And then second is um, Ameriprise, who I'm using now. And you know, I'll put a, li a list of companies that you can check. I mean, they've already done the aggregation, so you can kind of save some time because you don't want to go get a quote with with 20 companies. It's going to take you forever. Um, but you can do at least those, you know, three or four, and kind of get a sense of what people are charging. And you want to make sure that you have a baseline policy that you want to, you know, go after. So like my case, I have 100, 300. You know, and I want full coverage, $500 deductible, and just keep that. I mean, every company's gonna have a slightly different perk. Like AAA, for example, might have like free towing, right? So don't compare that, but maybe just add that in there and just know that that's there. Um, but you wanna compare apples to apples and then see what the six month premium is, so that way you can kind of look. You know, the prices are gonna be pretty wild and all over the place. And, um, you know, I know this because I do, I do this comparison shopping every year, um, usually around December. Um, and I can share with you guys what my numbers look like and I'll put it up on the screen right now. So I have on my screen here and you can see on the top left um, I have my you know, baseline policy that I want to compare against um, with all the other ones and the thing you'll notice is um, I've been actually doing this for the last three years or at least keeping track of it in, my, in this Google sheet here and it's more just to let me know like what I've been paying. So, um, so you can see here back in 2017, Geico was the cheapest. So this was when I had my um, at fault accident. So I was in uh, December of 2016. So when I renewed, it went up dramatically, and you can see that. And I had to pay that for a while, and you know, it didn't it didn't become apparent to me that I need to shop until December again. So like I said, I do this every year. And in December, my rate went up with Geico uh, to, you can see there, $1,027. And so I decided I'm going to shop around. So I went and looked at Progressive, Insurance, Liberty Mutual, and Ameriprise through Costco. And, and lo and behold, Costco was the cheapest one, and it was $819. So I was still paying about $1,640 here. Um, still cheap considering I had an at-fault accident, um, literally the year before that, um, or a year and a half or so. Um, and then you can see here, I did another, um, I did another um, estimate here or another quote, and I only really just looked at two companies because it seems like there's a trend here that these two companies are always the cheapest for me. Um, I mean, you can even see like State Farm is kind of ridiculous at you know two thousand forty-seven dollars for six months. No thanks. Um, so I did one back in I think it was like early January or late December here, and uh, you can see. Geico is still expen more expensive, so it's actually gone up even more. So it's at 1140 now, and Ameriprise has actually gone down, and so it looks like maybe my insurance points dropped down, and it's actually 656, which is what you saw earlier. So you can see here, um, you know, by just checking the rates, you know, every 12 months, or you know, if you want to go crazy and do it every six months on every renewal, then that's fine too. But uh, you can see here, I went from paying $951 to $820. You know, and then to six hundred fifty-six dollars. Um, you know, if the renewal ends up being the cheapest, then great. You don't have to do any work. Um, but if it's not, then you know you can easily switch. And when you do switch companies, they will give you a refund. So it's not like you know if you prepaid your premium, they're not going to give it back to you. Um, so you know, just keep that in mind. Another advantage to shopping around is uh, you actually will get new customer pricing as well. So sometimes you'll, you'll get lured in. So, you know, people have said Geico try to do this, but, you know, historically I haven't seen that. Um, and maybe that is what it is. You know, you sell the prices going up every six months. They'll give you new customer pricing and it'll be really cheap and enticing and they'll make you switch, uh, which is fine. Uh, the problem is if you're, you know, if you go back to your old ways where you just ignore your bills again, 
it's gonna keep going up and you're just gonna keep paying it and it might just be the same the same situation where you're in so you gotta stay on top of that and just make sure that you're aware of what your insurance bill is and just know that you know you're paying roughly a hundred dollars a month or two hundred dollars a month or hundred fifty dollars a month you know obviously your your situation is gonna be different your cars are gonna be different your cars may be newer maybe more expensive but you know this is a good tip to have um, a lot of the insurance companies know that you guys will not take the time to do the new quotes um, because most people think their time is more valuable than doing all of that nonsense, which I completely disagree. It's not, you know, this is this is your life and your well-being. You know, you have to survive and pay your bills, so it's good to optimize these things. So I'll give you an example of this, and I was looking at my sister-in-law's insurance bill, and I almost fell out of my chair when I saw how much she was paying. It was like over $3,700 a year for three cars. And all her cars are pretty old, like mine. I mean, she has one new Lexus, but her driving record is perfect compared to mine, right? I mean, everybody's on her on her policy was perfect, so it didn't make sense to me why she was paying 3,700. And she actually used some of the tips that I'm going to talk about later in this video. For some reason, it was really high, so she went with Ameriprise and with Geico, and both of them came pretty close. But she went with the Costco insurance because you know she felt better about it. Um, but she ended up paying now 1,400 dollars a year. You know, so she saved almost 2,300 dollars. I mean, that is a significant amount of money. That's like getting a $3,000 or $4,000 raise at your work. Another easy uh, savings is really just to make sure when you get your quote to pay the premium you know, completely in full because there's a lot of fees associated with paying monthly. I mean, a lot of these insurance companies charge processing fees and really there's no reason to. I mean, if you guys have adequate savings, you should be just prepaying everything. Um, I mean, you can save almost $30, $40, you know, some of them charge a lot of money for these processing fees. So, you know, save the save your money so you have emergency funds or at least a, a decent amount of savings so that way you can prepay these things. You know, pay it off with a credit card even. Um, that way you get some credit card points or something like that, but make sure you can pay it off. So one thing you'll notice about my cars is they're all old and they're all about nine to 10 years old and I have a 21 year old car. So um, the nice thing about that is those are really low in value. So in the event that you have a total loss, it's gonna be really inexpensive for the insurance to pay you out, right? So um, ultimately that means you have a cheaper premium as well. So um, not that the cars are any worse or anything like that, but you know, if you're driving something expensive, expect your premium to be higher. And one thing you can do is, you know, estimate the insurance premiums, you know, by using a website. And I'll kind of share one with you um, to kind of know what you're kind of getting yourself into by buying that, you know, brand new car. So me personally, I drive old cars, so I can get you know potentially one-way insurance if I want to, or really cheap you know two-way insurance. Uh, the next tip I have is you know there's this golden number in the insurance uh, industry, the car insurance industry, and that is um, the mileage number. And you know what a lot of insurance agents will tell you to do is to put less miles on your car. And you know if you drive less, then obviously you're gonna get into less accidents, get less speeding tickets, etc. So Keep track of your mileage every year. Uh, I know a lot of people don't, uh, but if you drive less than, let's say 7,500 miles annually, you can save a significant amount of money on your insurance. Me personally, on all of my vehicles, all of them are less than 7,500 miles. And you know, when I moved over here to this area near work, you know, it was a really short commute. So we were putting like 6,000 miles annually. And on my Prius even, it was like 6,000 miles. And so, that significantly dropped my premium and you can see it in my premium that I showed you earlier it's significantly cheaper than probably what you're paying um, so if you can you know put a 7500 mile um, policy um, let the agent know or when you do your online quote put 7500 miles um, you will see that the premium will be much cheaper I mean they're always gonna recommend 12,500 or 15,000 because that's the average that people drive every year um, but if you know that you're driving less than that Put that um, on my Toyota 4Runner since this is a third car and I only drive it pretty much on the weekends um, I actually have that one at 3,500 miles and that's like the second golden number so a lot of you like folks that are retired or people who you know don't really drive that much or maybe you carpool you know you can save a lot of money by doing this so try that out and see if that saves you money now when you do this uh, you will be asked to verify your miles which is okay I mean they'll just send you a form you put your miles on there and they'll kind of keep track of it for you me personally, I keep track of my own mileage, um, and if it goes over, then you know, so be it. You know, I've driven that much. Uh, one thing you can do is if they raise your premium like crazy, you can always switch insurance companies and just do the same thing. And so this is a hack you can do. Um, me, unfortunately, I can't do that because I can't go to Geico anymore because they're too expensive. Um, but if you guys have perfect driving records, you guys can just flip flop back and forth 
My next tip is uh, kind of going back to my third car again, and that is to consider a, a second car. So if you're single, consider a second car. If you're married, maybe a third car. And um, you can see my third car is really old. It's 21 years old. And what you can do is actually, you know, tell the insurance company that that's the car you're going to drive most often. And you know, in my case, I don't drive it that much, but just the fact that I have it on there and it's accounting for some of my mileage um, for the year and the policy, it's going to drop your rate a, a lot because you know, if you're driving that car, it means you're not driving the other car, which is more expensive to fix if it ends up getting into an accident. Um, so consider that. And if you had an old car, you know, maybe don't trade it in when you buy your new car. Just keep it on the policy because that car is going to be much cheaper to insure. And just tell them your new car is your, a pleasure car, uh, and just tell them that you're only going to drive it, you know, 7,500 miles, like I mentioned earlier, which may end up being the case. Um, so, you know, that can save you a lot of money because, again, brand new cars are going to cost a lot to insure compared to an old, you know, 10, 15 year old car that you had before. And by having that third car, you also get to skip the rental policy, so you can, you know, just ax that from the uh, policy, and you don't need it anymore. Now another way to save money on insurance, and this is you know goes back to driving old cars again, is to consider maybe removing the collision and comprehensive, um, which is the full coverage side of the insurance. Because usually you have an old car, you probably own it outright. You're not required to have full coverage. Um, you usually only need to have that side of uh, that kind of coverage when you are financing your car. So in that event, if you have that, then you can't do that. But in my case, you know, I've been considering dropping it just to see what the premium looks like. I haven't done the full research yet. You know, if it saves a substantial amount of money, it may be worth it to save that money long term somewhere else. Um, you know, let's say it saves, I don't know, three hundred dollars um, every six months, so six hundred dollars a year. You know, it depends on when that catch up period is, right? So that you know, let's say I had to replace my Prius. You know, it's probably worth like seven thousand dollars. It'll take me ten years to reap that benefit, so it might not make sense. So I might just keep it, but. You know, if it ends up being like, I'm only going to pay $600 a year or, you know, $400 a year, I may, I may consider it because that's like a much lower bill to come up with. And, you know, now I'm unemployed. So, you know, I'm trying to reduce the amount of um, spend that I have as much as possible. So, you know, that might be worth considering. Now, if you have to keep your full coverage insurance, um, another thing you can do is, you know, look at the premium amount when you raise the deductible. So if you're at 500 today, see what it will save you if you're at a thousand dollar deductible. Um, that number might be a lot, and if it's substantial, you may consider, you know, saving that additional money on the side because, you know, ultimately what that means is you have to come up with another $500 in the event that you have an accident and it's your fault. And, you know, if you have a decent emergency fund, that's probably not even going to matter too much. You know, I have a $500 deductible. I've been thinking about switching it to, to a thousand. Um, because you know, thousand dollars isn't going to end my life, and I can come up with that. You know, if you're younger, that might hurt you a lot. Um, but you know, that the savings that you're going to get from that might, you know, if you're a safe driver, long term, you might have enough to cover all of that, and it gives you more money in your pocket, so you can save, invest, you know, do whatever you want with it. Another tip I have is one thing I learned when I got married was uh, my insurance premium went down, and apparently, uh, insurance companies reward married couples um, because they feel like you're going to be more responsible now, which, hey, maybe. Uh -oh. um, so, you know, if you get married, um, you'll all of a sudden see an insurance discount just for being married. Uh, this next tip may not apply to you. It doesn't apply to me in California, but it may apply to you in your state. But some insurance companies will actually check your credit uh, history and your credit report uh, when you run your policy. So if they know that you're a responsible user of money and credit, most likely you're going to be a responsible driver. So uh, making sure that you have good credit score and good credit history uh, may help you save some money on your insurance. Now this next tip helped me quite a bit, um, and that is when I moved to this part of town, uh, this is a nicer part of town, It's um, you know the homes are a little bit more expensive. and. Um, when I moved here, I noticed my insurance premium went down, and I, I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't explain why, but I guess depending on where you park your car, it actually affects um, how much you pay in insurance. So they know where all the accidents are happening in certain parts of town, in certain cities, certain states, etc. Just the fact that you have it parked in this location means that you're in a safer place. It's not that nothing's going to happen to it. So, you know, if you're considering, you know, moving or living in an apartment, consider that. You know, you might save money just by living in a better area, which might offset your rent um, or your mortgage. Also, if you live closer to work, right, that means you're going to drive less miles. And remember that tip I talked about earlier about lower miles. 
So earlier I mentioned accidents and DUIs and all that stuff. So this is a tip that my family has done for, I don't know, the last 20 years or so since they've been in America. And, um, you know, some of you guys are just really bad drivers and I don't envy you at all because, I mean, some of you guys can't even get insured, right? So what do you do? So insurance companies are getting a little bit smarter about this, but you might be able to get away with it still. And that is, you can list yourself as a driver on your parents' policy. So, you know, let's say you really want to get a new car. Um, I mean, you shouldn't get a new car if you're a bad driver, but let's say you have a car. Um, you can put the insurance under your parents' policy, roll it up into their policy. You know, let's say they have a Ameriprise or something. They can list you as a driver, or they don't even need to list you as a driver. They can just let you borrow the car. Um, because the insurance follows the car, not the driver. And yeah, your parents are going to take the hit, but they're your parents, so they're probably going to do it. Um, but if you had like, you know, DUIs or crazy accidents and insurance premiums are like $5,000 a year or whatnot, you're probably not going to pay that, it doesn't make sense. So, you know, go be nice to your parents, ask them to be a part of their policy, put their name on your car so that way it looks like they're driving it, and then just pretend you're borrowing it. I mean, you could save a ton of money doing this. And you know, my parents did this for a long time for us when we were new drivers. So when all of my siblings and myself got our driver's license, you guys know insurance for teens and, and new, new drivers is, is crazy. And so what we did was um, we put you know, my mom or my dad as the primary driver and we would just be listed as potential drivers on there, even though we drove the car every day. We paid basically what they paid for insurance for the car, which is you know less than $100 a month or whatever it ended up being. But if you put yourself as a driver, you're easily going to pay that average I talked about earlier. It's going to be like $1,600 a year or maybe even more because they know, you know new drivers don't know how to drive. They're more risky. And my last tip is kind of reiterating what I said earlier, and that is to make sure you check your premiums every year or every six months. Uh, you never know. Things can change. I mean, you're going to definitely check it if you notice your bill goes up. But, you know, it's always good to make sure that you're paying the absolute least amount of money possible. Uh, most insurance policies are pretty much the same. Um, I know some of you are probably thinking like, well, I want to use AAA because I get to use my own body shop or whatever. To be honest, all insurance companies, they're required by law to let you pick whoever you want to fix your car. You can take it to the Toyota dealership if you really wanted to. They don't care. Um, they're going to give you a piece of paper, it's going to say the quote, and they're going to give you that amount of money, and then it's going to be done. And then you can, you can even keep the money if you want. It's up to you at that point. Definitely check every six months or every at least every 12 months for new rates um, because things change all the time. Some insurance companies want to get riskier, you know, they might change their algorithms and they might start giving people tons of, you know, really cheap prices to get them to switch. Um, you never know until you check, so I suggest you guys check at least every 12 months. Well, that's all the tips I have for you guys. Hopefully you found these things helpful. If you guys saved some money, you know, make sure you guys leave a comment and smash the like button for me. Subscribe to my channel for additional content. You know, I post videos about saving money, building wealth, building your career. And make sure you guys hit that notification bell so you know when a new video is posted. Have a nice day.